Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be going through some of my book recommendations for the summer. The first on the list is Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. This book follows characters Zori and Lennon. This book takes place over the summer, of course, and what's really interesting about it is it follows a camping trip. And so Zori and Lennon, the two protagonists, used to be best friends and then instead of like an enemies to lovers trope, it's like friends to enemies to lovers which is really interesting but so they go on this camping trip and during the camping trip they end up getting separated from the group and they end up having to like navigate the woods by themselves but basically they're lost in the woods and while they're lost they still hate each other so it's like them working through their differences while being in the woods in a life or death situation it's really fun. It's really cute. The relationship they have is really, really fun. Um, also, there's some really important themes about family in this book. It talks a lot about, uh, you know, the difference between your given family and your blood family and then the family that you choose, which is really important and really interesting. It's super cute. There's a lot of talk about romance, a lot of nature. There's a lot of stargazing. So if you're into nature, I would really recommend you pick this one up. The next two books that I'm going to be talking about are written by my personal favorite contemporary author of all time, Morgan Matson. So the first book is called Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, and this is the first Morgan Matson book I had ever read and I highly, highly recommend it. So this book follows main character Amy Curry, and prior to the book, her dad had recently passed away and her mother decides to move the family from California to Connecticut. But after her father's death, Amy's afraid to drive. So her mother plans a road trip for her to take to get across the country with her family friend's son, Roger. And so they have this really detailed, mapped out way that they're going to go across the country to get there at a specific time on a specific day and everything is going to go according to plan until they decide that they don't want to follow the mapped out plan anymore and they decide to go on their own epic detour so it's really fun it's really really cute but also it's just a really interesting book because they go on all these different adventures which are just really fun and really cute and it's just like a really easy summer read um and also see if i can find any in between each chapter there's little playlists that they have and there's drawings on some of them Let's see if i can find another oh here we have it's of a receipt to a diner um and then the trip fund and here an email oh, that's just really interesting really fun really cool added element um to the book Super cute, super fun, highly, highly recommend. I can't talk Morgan Matson and Summer without talking about my favorite Morgan Matson book of all time, and that's Second Chance Summer. This book, I don't even know where to begin. It's my favorite contemporary novel of all time. Like if I recommend if I'm recommending one of these books the most, it's it's this. It's a, this this is my pride and my joy. It follows Taylor and Taylor's dad is dying. And he knows he's dying and he decides that for his last summer he wants to spend it up at their lake house and they have not been to this lake house since taylor was 12. so it's been a while and before she left for that that last summer she just kind of like up and ran she didn't tie up any of loose ends she just left so now she's back at the lake house this summer with all the baggage that was from before still lingering while her dad is dying and it's just it's so beautiful it's so there's such sad parts to it but it's also so cute and so fun but also like be prepared to cry i think every time i read this book i cry more the last time i read this book it was like full-on sobbing so be prepared the relationship between taylor and her father in this book is beautiful it's like the best part of the book and the book's amazing um really 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 highly recommend this book the next two books we're going to talk about are by another contemporary queen sarah dessen this this next book and a few of the other books that i'm going to talk about after i don't actually own physical copies of because i've read them on ibooks on my phone the first one is the rest of the story this book follows the character emma sailor whose mom died when she was younger and so she spent most of her life with her dad but this summer in particular she's going to spend it with her grandma and cousin from her mother's side so people that she doesn't really remember that well or just remembers growing up with but haven't seen in a really long time 
The book showcases a big economic divide between Emma's mother's side and Emma's father's side, where they live on two completely different sides of the place in which the book takes place, one being really wealthy and then the one being more for the working class, which is where her mother's side comes from. There's an interesting almost identity dynamic where to her dad she's Emma but to her mom's family she's Sailor and she's trying to like find a middle ground between these two and who she actually is because all her life she's been Emma but now this summer she's Sailor and what comes along with each of those are two completely different things and trying to find this medium trying to find this identity in the middle is a really core concept of this book. Just a warning there are heavy themes and talk about addiction in this book. Um, being a Sarah Dustin novel, it's one of those cutesy romance but also hard-hitting at times type novels where it takes place in the summer so you're feeling like you're down at the beach with them and that's great when reading. Um, I'm not going to say too much about the plot because eventually I'm currently in the process of rereading or reading every Sarah Dustin book and then I'm compiling my thoughts on all of them, writing reviews for all of them, and I'm going to be ranking all of them so that'll be out. In the later the next Sarah Dessen book is called Along for the Ride and this was actually the first Sarah Dessen book that I've ever read. I read it last summer for the first time and it follows a character named Auden. Auden grew up in a really academic environment. This book takes place this summer before she goes into college um, and she's going to spend it with her dad, his new wife, and their newborn baby in Colby. If you've ever read a Sarah Dessen book then you know Colby is Dessen's beach town where a lot of the books take place or at least it's mentioned. Auden also has insomnia and so she spends most of her nights just kind of walking around Colby trying to find things to do and eventually she meets a boy named Eli who also has insomnia and seeing as they both can't sleep they decide to start spending some of that time together and they get pretty close. Um, she has an interesting dynamic with her father. There's also a huge plot line about biking like BMX biking which I've never read a book that had something like that in it so I thought it was really interesting and really unique to the storyline. Overall I highly recommend any of Sarah Dessen's novels but these two in particular for a cutesy summer you're gonna feel like you're down at the beach with them or you're just gonna want to go to the beach. The next book is another Jen Bennett novel it's called Alex Approximately and it's also a retelling of the film You've Got Mail. The protagonist in this novel is a girl named Bailey who lives on the east coast and she starts chatting online with a boy named Alex or at least that's what his screen name says his name is um who lives on the west coast he lives in California and this summer she's going to spend it with her dad in California who happens to live in the same town that Alex lives in. So she's really nervous, like she's been crushing on this guy that she's been talking to online for so long, but she doesn't end up telling him that she's going to be in his town. She ends up getting a job working at a museum, and the scenes at the museum are some of the best scenes in the novel. I just, um, where she meets a boy named Porter Roth, and quickly they start to butt heads and they start to bicker and fight. But as the novel progresses, she finds herself needing to choose between Alex and Porter. Highly recommend this one. It's super fun. I honestly got like a Cinderella story, Hilary Duff type vibes from it. But yeah, this is the last contemporary book that I'm going to be recommending for the summer. But it's called Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. And I really think just saying this alone is enough to make you want to read it. But it's a love story that takes place in Italy during the summer. Enough said, right? Just in case that wasn't enough, um, basically it's about this girl named Lina, 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 Lina? I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, it's L-I-N-A, but she makes a promise to her mother on her deathbed that she will go spend the summer with her father in Italy, but she hasn't seen her father in 16 years, so she doesn't want to see him, she doesn't want to be in Italy, but she promised her mother she would go, so she goes, and when she's there, she meets a boy named Ren, but she also finds one of her mother's journals. And so the novel follows her trying to learn more about her mother, finding out that her mother's been keeping a lot of secrets that she didn't know she had, and trying to retrace her mother's footsteps or follow in them to see more about her mother, and in the process, creating her own adventure in Italy. It makes you want to spend the summer in Italy, meet your own Wren, that type of situation. Highly recommend this one. It's, it's so cute. It's totally worth checking out. The last book that's on my recommendation list for the summer is a book that's actually not a contemporary so this is going to be for anyone who's read 8 million contemporaries this summer and just needs a break or maybe you don't like contemporaries or what have you and that is A House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. 
This book is creepy, it's scary, it's listed as a horror YA novel, but it's really intriguing. It's a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses, and the tagline for this book is literally In a Manor by the Sea, Twelve Sisters Are Cursed. That's intriguing enough to want to read it. I do think that you should go into this book knowing very, very little. But for a little basic summary or synopsis, it's about this girl named Anna Lee who has 12 sisters, but prior to the start of the novel, four of them have died. So she begins to think that her family is cursed. Um, and that she's next or someone's next or someone's gonna die. So she decides that she wants to figure out what's going on with her family. It can't be a coincidence that all of them are dying. So what has to be going on? She starts seeing ghosts and visions. And so you follow her as she tries to navigate what's going on with her family. There's so many twists, so many turns. It's so creepy. Some things can even be disturbing, very scary insane plot twist you never you're never able to fully predict what's going on in this book which makes it a really really intriguing read the amount of twists the amount of turns are innumerable but i highly recommend for a summary because it takes place by the ocean and she lives in a manor called high moor and they live there's a lot of boating and activities like that but not a summary in the way that you're thinking cutesy fun romance because it's about solving a murder. But still highly recommend. It'll still give you some type of summer vibe. Maybe just not the same time you're used to. So those are all the books I have to recommend today. Thanks for coming by the channel. Thanks for checking out the video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll be posting more content soon. Bye.